Greetings from Mobility Outlook and welcome to Women in Mobility. Our guest for today is Ms. Preeta Arun, R&D Director for Powertrain Business Group of Valio. Welcome. Welcome and thank you, Murli. Thank you. You are most welcome. In her current role, Preeta leads the product development and demonstration of powertrain electrification products drives research and innovation activities as well as co-manages the engineering disciplines that support the global development for the product groups such as powertrain electrified mobility and powertrain systems driveline. Preeta has previously held the position of Deputy General Manager for Powertrain and Aiders at Renault Nissan Technology Business Center India. Her career journey includes valuable experiences at TomTom Tom International BV and NXP Semiconductors in the Netherlands, as well as the roles at KPIT Cummins Infosystems, Engineering Mechanical Research Center, and Aeronautical Development Agency in Bangalore. With more than 26 years of experience in the automotive domain, she has spearheaded the development of conventional powertrains and disruptive technologies that include powertrain electrification and autonomous driving and advanced driver assistance system. She is a seasoned professional with a proven record of accomplishments in operations management and operational excellence, building teams and activities successfully from scratch. You started your career with the Aeronautical uh, Development Agency, which is a male-dominated organization. How was your experience? Okay, so uh, first, um, your first step in career determines your further journey uh, where you're heading to. So I was fortunate enough uh, to uh, get a, j a job in Aeronautical Development Agency. As you mentioned, it is predominantly male-dominated uh, organization. But I was driven towards the role because I was passionate about the role and the technology. So uh, there were, uh, it was uh, a handful of women uh, who were working for uh, ADA. But uh, it was an opportunity for me to learn the technology, learn new skills and it was working with the best of the best minds in the industry. So it was a great opportunity and a great uh, learning for me. And it's also, it was also an opportunity to break uh, the gender bias uh, working in such a um, male dominated industry. I think after your graduation, you went to Shanghai to pursue your Masters in Business Excellence. So what is the you know, key driver and then what is what are the key experiences you know, that you garnered over there? Okay. So it's an interesting question because um, I was part of the talent pool um, uh, for the executive leadership. So uh, due to this I got an opportunity to pursue my MBE in uh, Shanghai. So it was a wonderful uh, opportunity because I was the only woman from uh, India to participate in that uh, program. And I was among uh, four to five women uh, who were participating in total compared to 30 to 40 men who were part of that uh, program. So it was uh, very interesting because I wanted to hone my skills in executive leadership, especially uh, related to finance, how the company finance works, uh, what is a cash flow or uh, what is free cash flow, what is a bit. Uh, so these t uh, terminologies and how um, uh, these financial terms represent a company's uh, growth so these sort of aspects was very new to me and I got an opportunity to learn that. Also it was an opportunity to learn about uh, how different functions within, within an organization collaborate. For example marketing, sales, uh, finance and other departments and functions how they collaborate with each other and to know about how to make win-win uh, negotiations and uh, how to uh, make an e efficient communication. So there was a lot of learning and it was an uh, international crowd so uh, got to network with uh, many people uh, from different industries apart from the automotive industry as well. So it was a great learning experience which I could uh, use it further uh, during my uh, career steps. Yeah, what are the key insights that you learned that you were able to applicate in your you know, profession in the initial days of your career journey. Okay. So initial days of the career journey, so uh, as you know, it's an establishment phase. So your career also will be growing and uh, you'll be setting up a family. So you'll have uh, uh, young kids at home and uh, so on. So mine was also not different. So um, I, I was married. Uh, I, I, ha I had ambitions to have a great uh, career. 
So uh, that was the stage. Um, uh, I would like to uh, give you an interesting experience that uh, happened at that time, uh, which took me to the uh, first level of uh, leadership. So I got an assignment, uh, uh, an on-site assignment to work in the United Kingdom. So that time my first daughter was uh, very small and uh, uh, this uh, career move was also very important for me because it was a totally different domain where uh, I can learn and uh, contribute. So I took up this opportunity and I went to United Kingdom uh, uh, to learn a new skill and uh, when I came back I got the opportunity to have the first uh, leaders, leadership uh, position. So how I could do that uh, was mainly because of my family support. So my husband is also from the automotive industry, so he can understand uh, the happenings in the automotive and what are the expectations etc. So his support was uh, crucial, also my mother and uh, my family support was also very crucial. So uh, what I would say is uh, take up the opportunities and then uh, proceed. So uh, in that way you can uh, make a uh, progress in the career. Can you share your experience during the early part of your career? That has actually, you know, became the foundation for your future growth. So, from the time I started my career journey, if you see, I was initially working on internal combustion engines and uh, uh, gasoline and uh, diesel vehicles. So, I was very much into the powertrain domain at the start of my career. So, I started my journey as an embedded software engineer. So from the time uh, that I started to today, if you see, uh, so today we are uh, working in many of the disruptive technologies. For example, electric cars, um, autonomous driving, then uh, uh, advanced driver assistance systems, etc. So, and when I started, uh, the, uh, the methodologies were different, uh, the language was different, uh, the tools that we used were different. And today, if you see, um, we work on model-based design, uh, simulation so that we can reduce the cost and effort and uh, the timelines we can reduce. So these are playing a major role um, and uh, to make the move from there to here uh, I had to learn uh, constantly. So the technologies the, uh, from uh, embedded uh, manual coding to auto coding uh, to work on MATLAB modeling etc. So I have to study constantly to adapt to these uh, technologies. So this was one of the things that I was doing uh, consistently and uh, um, I had a passion to do that also. So this is one thing and uh, second is uh, uh, to take responsibility and uh, to be accountable for the responsibility that I take. So I would like to give you an interesting experience uh, from uh, my past uh, assignment. So, uh, in my past assignment, uh, there was one big project that uh, uh, that was supposed to be offshore to India. So, but uh, what was happening was uh, there were a lot of uh, issues in that project and the people were not able to uh, take it forward. So, it was at the verge of uh, closure and uh, uh, it was like uh, they were not confident to proceed with that uh, project in India. It was at that juncture that I took over and uh, I took over this uh, project. So what I did was, um, I took the responsibility uh, and I did a root cause analysis. What are the major issues that were uh, uh, resulting in uh, such errors? And I defined some uh, temporary and permanent uh, corrective actions which were uh, giving results. But it was like a lot of defects were there. Um, you have to fix the defects as well as uh, deliver further uh, modules as well. So it was like uh, you have to do both uh, in parallel. So it was a, a big task at that time because um, every one hour uh, or two hour, uh, two hour once you will get some defects which you will have to fix and deliver and at the same time you have to implement new requirements and fix this bug and deliver that also along with that. So it was a big task. So finally um, it worked, uh, the uh, countermeasures taken worked and uh, there was one big module which was again given to us uh, to prove that uh, we can do that. We did it successfully and after that a uh, lot of activities uh, were offshore to India apart from the activities that uh, we worked on. So um, it gave the confidence um, uh, and uh, it gave the um, trust to the management that uh, we can do that uh, from India. 
so taking accountability and uh, taking responsibility so this is one of the things that uh, i have been doing so these were the major things um, that i would say uh, i have been consistently doing wonderful wonderful nice to hear that nice. uh, you worked with tom tom and also nxp semiconductors in netherlands yeah. what was the experience over there okay so that came at a point uh, when I didn't want to take up that opportunity. So uh, it came uh, uh, because my husband had an expatriate mission uh, in the Netherlands. And that time I had my second daughter, she was uh, uh, an infant. So I didn't want to take up that, uh, that opportunity at that time because uh, it was like moving with a small kid uh, to a uh, country which uh, I don't know. So uh, I was hesitant at the beginning, but uh, finally it was like uh, uh, the paperwork and other things will be difficult if I have to move later on. So I decided to move on and I entered into TomTom Tom, uh, in the NXP semiconductors first and then moved to TomTom. Tom. So they were both uh, different domains. In NXP it was multimedia mostly and in TomTom Tom it was uh, the portable navigation devices. So both were different uh, domains all together and in a different uh, country, working with uh, multinationals. So it was a great exposure, a lot of uh, good learning uh, that gave me the confidence that I can uh, work uh, with other uh, nationals in a multicultural uh, environment. So uh, that gave me the confidence further when I worked with uh, other uh, European nationals and uh, Japan and other uh, country nationals when I uh, came back to India. So it was like uh, breaking from my comfort zone and uh, uh, diving into the unknown and uh, uh, proving myself. So breaking from the comfort zone, that gave enough confidence for you to work with any culture, any country. Yes. Wow, very interesting. Uh, when you joined the Value, I think uh, there was a challenge for you to set up the you know, Center of Excellence for Software and Electronics. Yes. So how was it? So it was uh, challenging, uh, it was challenging in the sense um, India is a country you know where uh, we have a lot of uh, software and electronics engineers and every year uh, uh, many engineers graduate out of universities in uh, software and electronics. It was challenging because um, uh, for a center of excellence you need to have the respective roles. For example if you want to do uh, requirement solicitation you need to have requirements engineers. If you want to design a software, you need to have architects. So you need all the uh, people with the relevant competencies uh, to have a center of excellence. You should have experts, you should have specialists, you should have reviewers uh, who can perform that role. So uh, it was like, uh, should we have the activity first and then should we go to recruit the people or shall we recruit the people and then go for the relevant activity? So it was uh, such a condition. And also, uh, as you know, apart, uh, compared to the industries I have worked before, this is a totally a metrics organization. So it is not like uh, you take the decision and you get approval from one person. It's like uh, from multiple people you'll have to convince and get the um, uh, approval to start the activities or start such a thing. So it was challenging in uh, multiple aspects. Very interesting. Uh you must have taken a lot of decisions no? because all these things no, call for decision making instantaneously. Uh, has uh, any decision taken by you impacted anyone in the organization? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, so maybe I will start with uh, uh, one, uh, one of the recruit recruitment drives that I have uh, taken. So uh, in one of the projects that I have uh, um, done in the past, so we were in need of uh, people who can stay with us for a long time. So strategically what decision we have taken is, um, we will recruit from tier 1 and tier 2 cities uh, where we can get some people uh, with the relevant skills. So we went for a drive, uh, we recruited some people uh, uh, from tier 1 and tier 2 cities. We groomed them, uh, so it is uh, on the job training uh, for the work we have to do. Then also on multiple facets, for example on the soft skills, communication, presentation, etc. So we did this and uh, uh, it was a wonderful uh, result what we got. Uh, so the, these candidates were able to 
um, uh, deliver uh, the products as per uh, projects as per uh, the milestones uh, on perfect quality they could learn very well and um, they had an overall uh, uh, for example on all aspects they were they proved to uh, be good and uh, one among them was uh, from a background uh, like uh, she uh, was from a uh, social worker sort of uh, family and uh, it was a dream for her to work in uh, such a company and uh, today uh, uh, all those people whom we recruited in that drive they are in uh, lead positions and uh, uh, with good skills and competency so i'm really proud to have uh, been associated with that uh, drive and uh, have taken that uh, decision because i could change uh, somebody's life uh, because of that how do you describe your you know, leadership uh, skills okay I uh, uh, rely on perseverance so um, I do not quit easily and I try to uh, once I take a task I try to do it uh, till completion so um, I'm a go getter and then uh, try to persevere and then get the things done so this is one thing and second is I prepare a strategy and roadmap on how to do things and uh, I explain it uh, transparently with uh, my team as well as with my um, N plus one or uh, higher ups also explain them uh, and get their buy-in. So getting the buy-in, uh, then working uh, transparently with them, building the trust, uh, then uh, never quitting attitude. So these are the things that I uh, take forward. When I was going through your profile, I saw that you now you are specialized in identifying and grooming leaders. How is it helping to empower women? Okay. So. Um, to answer this, uh, to groom a talent, right? What we look forward is their skills and competencies. So, what skills and competencies they have, and what is their potential to grow. So, these are the aspects we lo uh, look at, whether it is men or women. So, especially for women, if you ask, uh, so there are many programs that uh, we do. So, for example, in Value, we have this uh, Grow Together section, uh, session uh, where uh, we groom some uh, women. Uh, for example, I am coaching um, some women leaders to grow up in the ladder. So, grow together is one thing. Then, apart from that, mentoring we do. Then, experience sharing by, uh, what is that, senior uh, women leaders. So, when uh, they face some um, issues or when they have to uh, overcome something. So, these are examples that they, they can look forward uh, to see like, uh, uh, how they can uh, take example and uh, take advantage of uh, the solutions proposed by these uh, leaders. So then uh, for uh, skill related uh, and competency related things, we have uh, on the job trainings or uh, some training mentoring sessions which are given uh, to women leaders. So this is specific to women leaders, but uh, in general, what we try to do is uh, for skills and competencies, we try to men uh, we try to give on the job trainings or some trainings to grow their skills. And for potential and uh, uh, for communication and other soft skills, we give uh, uh, other trainings. What are your thoughts on diversity, equity, and inclusion practiced by many companies? Now? So today I think uh, the companies are becoming more and more uh, conducive uh, for diversity and inclusion. Uh, every company thinks that uh, when diverse uh, views come, uh, so it adds value and uh, it adds value to the growth of the company and for the products they are making etc. So um, value is also not different, so value is, into, uh, value is a company that fosters uh, diversity and inclusion. So there are many uh, initiatives that Value is uh, taking. Uh, for example, uh, succession planning. Um, there are some programs like um, uh, Grow Together where uh, women uh, are given importance and uh, women, uh, uh, there are coaching programs by senior uh, leadership women uh, to uh, young growing uh, women, etc. So um, I think uh, the environment is changing and it is becoming more and more uh, conducive. Great. Uh, what, according to you, are uh, the impediments for certain organizations in empowering women? So first is, um, uh, now what I feel is most of the organizations, uh, they have this um, diversity and inclusion as uh, one of the key parameters because that helps uh, to get diverse views and for the organizations to grow. 
So the environment is very conducive now. But what I feel is um, there is this unconscious bias which is uh, there uh, in people's mind. For example, um, when you want to promote a women leader or hire a women leader, so what goes in the back of the mind is, uh, will she be able to do it? She has a family, she has a, a child, whether she'll be able to do it or not. And second is, um, uh, for women itself, uh, they have in the back of the, uh, their mind, like uh, whether I'll be able to ba balance my family and uh, career, uh, will it become very stressful for me to take higher leadership positions? And uh, the self-doubt uh, will be uh, is there is what I feel. How do you strike a balance between work and life? Because I think your position calls for a lot of travel, extended yeah. meetings, etc. Yeah. So I make a list of tasks that I have to do uh, every day. So I try to revise it based on the priorities as well. So I try to make a list of uh, activities that I have to do, then I prioritize them. So what I have to do first, what is most important for the day, etc. So this is one thing that I do, then I do a planning like how I have to do that activity. So this is something that I do and when multiple priority tasks are there, I try to ask for a, uh, which is having the highest priority, which I need to take up first. So these sort of things I uh, uh, try to prioritize, plan and then execute uh, the task. And second is, uh, now we have um, in value uh, flexible hours and um, uh, work from uh, work from home and uh, similar things we have. So either I can start my activity earlier in the day and uh, the hours I use to travel, I use it for uh, spending with the family and weekend is uh, completely for the family. So this is how I'm striking a balance and um, as you know, so when we study in physics uh, or chemistry, right, uh, there will be certain laws which say uh, under certain, uh, under this temperature and this uh, uh, pressure it will work. Uh, if you exceed, uh, it will not work. So there is no um, thing like an ideal uh, situation where um, it, it will be always ideal. So uh, usually it will be like uh, sometimes you'll have uh, uh, some project milestones to work where you'll have to work additional hours. And similar, similarly is the case with the family. So with the family, when family is not uh, feeling well or uh, when they uh, when that situation demands, we'll spend additional hours with the family also. So that happens sometimes, but most of the times uh, we try to do planning, we try to do flexible hours and so on. Good analogy and very well explained, very well explained. So finally, what are your recommendations for the young women aspirants to get into automotive, especially the manufacturing side? Today, if you see, we are in a disruptive world where uh, we are uh, talking about electric vehicles, we are talking about uh, autonomous driving, we are talking about uh, connected vehicles, in-car experience, where car is your second home, and shared mobility, and we are talking about many, many disruptive technologies. We are talking about Industry 4, software-driven vehicles, uh, arti artificial intelligence, and so on. So these are uh, not gender driven, the, these are um, uh, men or women, uh, whoever is a technology aspirant, uh, they can take up uh, such activities. And um, automotive is the most happening uh, uh, area where a lot of innovations are happening. So if you are a technology enthusiast or uh, you are uh, technology driven, then th this is the uh, area for you where you can contribute a lot and you can learn many things from this. And finally, what I would like to say is, I would like to quote uh, Mr. Uh, Steve Jobs, who says, uh, your work is uh, going to be a large part of your um, life. And uh, to have a truly, um, uh, what is that? Uh, you, if you want to be truly motivated and you, if you want to do something, you, you have to do a great work. And great work is one that you love to do. So have the seal uh, and do it with passion. So that's all uh, what I have to say. Well, it was wonderful talking to you, Prita. Thank you so much for sparing a valuable time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Murli. It was my pleasure. Thank you.